Good morning, students. Today, I am going to deliver a lecture on nature of ethics. This topic is especially meant for B.A. third semester students of both honors and generic course. Here, I am going to cover my lecture under three hats. First, definition of ethics. Second, nature of ethics. Third, scope of ethics. Now, let's come to what is ethics. Ethics is considered as one of the main branches of philosophy. Ethics is the philosophical study of morality. Ethics is the science which discusses the rightness and wrongness of human conduct or actions. As we all know, men are rational social beings and so only human beings can reason and make judgment and hence live with moral values. We have faith in morality and belief in right and wrong, good and evil, virtue and vice, so on and so forth. We get these ideas like right and wrong, good and bad, virtue and vice from our social environment. But normally, we do not indulge in rational reflection on the nature of right and wrong. But ethics is a science of reflective morality. The branch of philosophy which investigates the nature and validity of rightness and wrongness of human conduct with reference to the ideal of the highest good is called ethics. Moving on to the origin of the word ethics. The word ethics is derived from the Greek word ethica, which is again derived from under Greek word ethos which means character, customs, uses, or habits. Ethics is also called moral philosophy. The word moral is derived from the Latin word mores, which also means customs or habits. Thus the literal meaning of ethics is the science of customs or habits of men. Conduct is the outer expression of character. The character of a man is expressed in and through his conduct. Hence, ethics may be defined as the science of character and conduct. Ethics is concerned with the evaluation of human conduct with reference to an idea of ultimate end or highest good. Therefore, ethics may be defined as the science of highest good. It seeks to determine the supreme ideal involved in human conduct. Mackenzie defines ethics as the study of what is right or good in human conduct or the science of the ideal involved in human life. According to William Lilly, ethics is the normative science of the conduct of human beings living in societies. Now let's Move on to nature of ethics. By now, you all are well aware that ethics is the science which discusses the rightness and wrongness of human actions with reference to highest good. An ethical standard or ideal distinguishes ethics from other special sciences. Coming to the first point of the nature of ethics, Ethics is a normative science. Ethics is a science insofar as it aims at systematic explanation of rightness and wrongness or our voluntary actions in the light of the highest good of man. It is a science since it depends upon observation, classification, and explanation of human conduct with reference to an ideal. Science is basically classified into two broad groups, positive science and normative science. But ethics is not a positive science. A positive science, which is also called natural or descriptive science, deals with what is. It deals with facts as it is and tries to explain them by their causes and discover the actual order of things. For example, physics, chemistry, biology, psychology are 
positive sciences. On the other hand, normative science judge the value of the facts in terms of an ideal or standard. Normative sciences are concerned with judgments of what ought to be. A normative science is also called a regulative science. Ethics is a normative science. It is concerned with judgment upon conduct, its rightness and wrongness. Ethics is concerned with human conduct as it ought to be. It passes the judgment of value upon human actions with reference to the moral ideal that is good. Normative science tries to determine norms, ideals, or standards. There are three ideals of human life that is truth, beauty, and good. These are the supreme values in human experience. Moving on to the next point, ethics is not a practical science. A science teaches us to know and an earth to do. But a practical science teaches us to know how to do. A practical science is concerned with means for the realization of a definite end, for example, medical science. Medical science is a practical science since it does not seek to determine the ideal of health but points out the means by which health may be best produced. But ethics cannot be regarded as practical science. Ethics only tries to ascertain the moral ideal but does not try to lay down rules for the attainment of it. Ethics never teaches how to live a moral life. So ethics is a normative science and it discusses the ideal of goodness or rightness. But the study of ethics as a bearing on our moral life, as a theory of morality, it bound to act on practical life. But this does not make ethics a practical science. Moving on to the last point, the nature of ethics. We can say that ethics is not an art. Art depends upon outcome or result, that is, art deals with acquisition of skill to produce definite objects. For instance, painting is an art. So ethics is different from art because ethics deals with morality, that is, rightness or wrongness of human conduct, which is really intrinsic and. There is no branch of knowledge which can teach us the art of moral life. Even if it teaches us the rules of moral conduct or percept, it cannot teach us how to realize them in practice. Mackenzie stated that ethics can never be regarded as an art on the basis of two special features that virtue has. First, virtue implies activity. A good painter is one who can paint beautifully, but a good man is one who does act rightly. Capacity to do good things does not make a man good or virtuous. A truthful man is not the one who can speak the truth, but one who habitually speaks the truth. Thus, goodness is not a capacity, but an activity. Secondly, virtue lies in the will. The will or volition is the essence of virtue. Even if it is not expressed in overt action, Kant says a good will is good, not because of what it performs or effects, not by its aptness for the attainment of some proposed end, but simply by virtue of the volition. The morality of an action depends upon the inner motive or intention rather than its outer consequence. Thus, art aims at the produced result, while moral judgment is intimately related to inner motives and intentions. Coming to the last part,
that is the scope of ethics. By scope or province of ethics, we understand the range of a subject matter with which ethics deals. First, voluntary action. Ethics determines the moral values of human behavior. Ethics discusses the rightness and wrongness of human action. Here, action means voluntary action. Therefore, nature of voluntary action, difference between voluntary and not voluntary action, and their related topics like desire, motive, intention, etc., comes within the discussion of ethics. Second point is moral standard. In order to determine whether human conduct is right or wrong, moral ideal or standard is necessary. The action which is conducive to moral action is good or right, and action which is not conducive to moral ideal is regarded as wrong or bad. Therefore, the task of ethics is to determine the source of moral ideal and also to determine which ethical standards are acceptable. Therefore, according to some, according to some, moral ideal is law or rule. To some, it is happiness or pleasure. To some, it is duty for duty's sake. To some, it is perfection or self-realization. The main task of ethics is to explain these ideals and to determine which is best and most acceptable. Next point is sense of duty and moral obligation. The consciousness of right and wrong is accompanied by the consciousness of oddness, sense of duty or moral obligation. When we are aware of something which is right, we are also aware that it is our duty to do it well. Duties and rights are closely related. As such, it is the duty of the son to take care of his father in his old age, and this is the right of father. Thus, the ideas of duty and rights comes within the scope of ethics. Moral judgment is closely related to the sense of moral obligation. When we consider an action as good or bad, we feel inspired to do good deeds and to avoid bad deeds. This inspiration or motivation is called moral obligation. Hence the question of nature and origin of moral obligation is also discussed in ethics. Next, merits and demerits. Consciousness of moral obligation is related to the notion of merits and demerits. We praise those who does good deeds. There is merit in actions when the person performs his duty by overcoming obstacles and there is demerit when one fails to do an action which he knows he should do. Ethics also discusses about the merits and demerits of action. Next point is door and the subject matter of moral judgment. Ethics deals with moral judgment. Therefore, questions related to moral judgment, such as who is the door of moral judgment, what is the subject matter of moral judgment? And what is the nature of moral judgment? These subjects are also included in ethics. Next point is fundamental postulates of morality. Ethics has also certain fundamental postulates like every science, such as personality, reason, and freedom of will. These issues are discussed in ethics. Since we have freedom of will, we must accept our moral responsibility for our behavior or actions. Apart from this, moral sentiment is also discussed in ethics. If we do righteous deeds, we feel happy, and if we do bad deeds, we feel unhappy. 
Hence the questions of the nature and origin of moral sentiments and the relation of moral sentiments to moral judgments are discussed in ethics. Next point is conscience. The another name for moral faculty is conscience. Ethics also deals with questions about the nature and theories of conscience. Next is punishment. Since man has freedom of will, therefore man has moral responsibility as well. The criminal is responsible for his crime and he should be punished for his wrongdoing. Punishment is ethically justified. Ethics therefore deals with punishment and its different theories. And the last point is other sciences related to human conduct. Even though ethics as a specific area for its discussion, ethics also discusses many subject matter of other sciences which are related with human behavior. In this attempt, ethics as indirectly to deal with several problems which are psychological, philosophical, sociological, and political in nature. That's the end of today's lecture. Thank you.